myself precisely well together with my collaborators we've designed methods to infer the diversity of international routes of for a country including the influence of transit of autonomous systems why is it important to study the diversity of international routing in each country well it is important to uh, to give you an example of a country a specific country let's speak of bolivia we know that uh, Bolivian users use a residential provider or a mobile provider, or in some cases there are uh, others like universities that connect uh, the autonomous system. And these autonomous uh, systems of origin have the power of connecting their internet. Uh, they, they can be, their service can be interrupted if they don't pay. There are other categories, the transit autonomous systems. Many people don't know them, especially those that do not attend uh, LACNOC conferences. And they may have, uh, they might have the same uh, impact on uh, the connection of their devices without any established relation with uh, the Bolivian users. Well, Bolivia in this case. We see that these connections abroad are highly concentrated in one or two networks in this case for instance a direct uh, trans an indirect transit so a provider in peru that is uh, a neighboring country uh, uh, the uh, users in bolivia may run the risk of uh, uh, being uh, um, disrupted by third parties imagine this situation to your right and compare it with other network in Brazil, Brazil Telecom. We know that uh, Brazil Telecom users have a broader range of uh, transit connectivity than these other uh, networks. That is a fiction uh, of uh, uh, Bolivia, but doesn't differ so much of the uh, real topology in Bolivia. We also know that Brazil is big enough and connected enough to IXP infrastructure. And in to on top of the transit uh, connectors connected to the uh, abroad, it can also uh, establish peering connection, for instance, with networks in the United States. And it is through these connections that Brazilian users can get a part of their contents that from this network, in particular, the uh, foreign peering or from a client of one of these two networks. Of course, peering agreements don't cover the entire internet, but only the traffic that comes from the networks and from their own clients. Now, what we want to know for each United Nations member, particularly the Latin, of course, the Latin American countries, is how from this large spectrum of a high diversity in routing, like is the case of Brazil, to others with more limited routing, like the case of Bolivia, in order to see how traffic takes place. For example, in countries as Brazil, we want to quantify how congested the routes are coming from abroad. The result of this concentration is serious, and we have evidence that this is based, for example, if there is a lack of connection between these two transit providers, for example, the connect Bolivia with the rest of the world. The users in Bolivia don't have any mechanism otherwise to have access to content from abroad. So the hypothesis is that countries with concentrated routes in these countries, some ASs could have the capacity to observe, manipulate, and interrupt international connections. This concern is not hypothetical alone. There are events in recent that took place in recent in the recent past past where events affected a provider or a limited number of providers that then affected large number of users. For example, WhatsApp blocking in Brazil, which affected the WhatsApp service in other countries of the region. We have another example from Central Asia. Apparently, Russia, when attacking two networks in Kyrgyzstan, managed to disconnect most of the country from the internet. 
And this is my favorite example. A retired woman in Georgia, not in, in Asia, not in the United States, managed to cut off Armenia from the internet. Now, the evidence we have access to shows that the countries that have the highest risk are located in regions that are not very well represented in the literature, including Asia, Central, Central Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Now, how do we study the centralization of the routes in each country? We start with the origin autonomous systems, and we first ask, which are the origin autonomous systems that have foreign peers. And we say that in those countries where the origin autonomous system don't have foreign peering, so traffic flows through traffic connections. And very often, these are concentrated in a low number of providers. For reasons of time, I will describe the methodology for this step, but you can look at the slides in the internet or send me an email or if the presentation of last Wednesday was recorded whom you can check there. So we saw that these 15 Latin American countries are connected to the internet with transit connections. This includes basically the Pacific zone of South America, many Caribbean countries and the country that we saw had foreign peering, the data sets we had was Panama. Now, this is, these are the results that we would like to discuss with the different countries of the region, but particularly with these 15 countries. We have a set of countries in Latin America and in the rest of the world, 75 countries in the world, where we know that connections go through transit providers. Now, in order to quantify to what extent routing is concentrated based on traffic, traffic providers, we analyze these metrics on a country basis, which shows how many IP addresses generated by any autonomous system, for example, in Bolivia, have a specific transit provider. We have several filters and heuristics to take into account the limitations of the public PGP data. Now, this metric it goes from zero to one, shows that a transit autonomous system has an influence at country level. If it is zero, then this is a transit provider that is not present in the country. Now, if the value is near one or equal to one, it means that the transit provider is for the, all the IP addresses in the country. Now, looking at the distribution of the metrics in each of the countries we studied, we have an indication to determine how concentrated the ecosystem is. This is the example of Bolivia, once again, which is quite similar. The value of 0 0.5 is quite similar to the maximum level of the metrics in Bolivia. And this shows that half of all addresses go through one single autonomous system. In other words, if any event affects this autonomous system, then half of the addresses in Bolivia would be affected. The results from the 75 countries, which we knew were in a situation of risk because they don't have foreign peering, is here. There are some countries that have a low routing diversity. As a result, they are more exposed to risk to events affecting one single network. These are the major five providers in every country. And here we have the different values. The first thing we see is that CTI drops very rapidly. In many countries, the routes are concentrated. The mean CTI goes from 0 0.35, more than one third of addresses are only, they only go through one autonomous system, they drop to half the value to the second most important network. However, there are significant differences in the countries. In the case of Chile, the distribution is far more horizontal. In other words, the network in Chile has a higher routing 
diversity and less exposure to risk of events that might affect one city network. Cuba, however, has the highest concentration of routes in one single AS, and as a result, the connectivity of Cuba with the rest of the world is in a high-risk situation. Finally, and this is another area where we'd like to speak with operators who have information on these countries. Finally, we saw that there are two ASs. One is Telefonica, the global telephone company based in Spain, which dominates traffic in Spanish-speaking countries in Latin America. This includes Bolivia with a CTI value of 0 0.55, in Peru, a CTI value 0 0.44. In other countries, the traffic provider is between 2 to 8 percent, but in all cases, they are among the top 10. Finally, we have cable and wireless, which dominates the traffic in the Caribbean islands mostly, but also in other countries that are based in that region. In Trinidad and Tobago, almost 60 percent of the IP addresses go through this single traffic network. And there are other countries that are larger, like Venezuela, where I come from. This value is one third of all IP addresses. And this is also the main traffic, international traffic provider in that country. Thank you very much. And I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. But in general, I would love to receive your comments. And if you let me know if we're on the right track, and we are most interested in these countries, but also in the entire region. Thank you very much. Thank you, Alexander. There is a question from Mark Urban. What would the situation be if the academic community in Bolivia were connected to the academic, dedicated academic networks such as Red Clara with exclusive routes and capacities for academic purposes? I haven't heard about Red Clara, but in general, our metrics, the metrics I was referring to in my presentation, highlights the situation of the entire country. So universities in general have smaller address blocks, and for that reason, their impact on the national metrics is low. Now, let, we're going to make an additional study where we're going to See, in the case of the academic networks and the government networks and the critical infrastructure networks, how these are connected with the rest of the world. We are aware that in some cases, the university networks have a connection with a greater diversity than that of the entire country. Thank you. Erwin Katz asks if there is any study regarding the status of Paraguay, because we're also a landlocked country in the center of the continent. Yes, the vast majority of the countries that don't have access to the sea achieve interconnection mostly through transit. In the case of Paraguay, we haven't studied that closely, but we think that maybe because it is closer to the traffic exchange points in Brazil and in Argentina, we might have more opportunities of hearing. In our study, we managed to see that, for example, Paraguay has a hearing level that excluded it from this study. Nevertheless, we are studying to see how we can characterize hearing in a more complete way. Thank you. That would be all. Thank you, everyone.